Windows Phone or Android? PureView or UltraPixel? Polycarbonate or aluminum? If these are the decisions running through your mind, let us help. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Nokia Lumia 1020 versus HTC One. At first blush, there's almost nothing similar about these smartphones. They're made of different materials, their casing designs are totally disparate, and their software platforms have almost nothing in common, aesthetically. But there are two commonalities here. They're both among the best their respective platforms can offer, and they're both being sold on the merits of their cameras. Let's jump into our comparison, and on the way, you should follow Pocket Now on social media and subscribe here on YouTube so you don't miss future ones. Thanks. Let's talk about casing build first, since this is the most obvious difference between the phones. The HTC One's zero-gap construction is the more eye-catching, with its machined aluminum body and polycarbonate accents, and it feels quite well-constructed in the hand, its build quality making it seem more substantial than its 143 grams would suggest. Though it's a robust 9.3 millimeters thick at its middle, the shell tapers down to about 4 millimeters on the sides, giving the phone a very sleek in-hand feel. The Lumia 1020 gives off a reassuring, well-constructed vibe as well, but that's about the only physical similarity these phones enjoy. The 1020 is slightly squatter, but in every other dimension it's larger, peaking in thickness at 10.4 millimeters and weighing in at 158 grams. It's also made entirely of matte polycarbonate, save for the aluminum camera disc and side keys and the Gorilla Glass 3 display facing, a generation newer than the One's display protection. It's hard to overstate how different these devices feel in the hand. The One continues to impress with its elegant, if slippery, design, and its aluminum build, while susceptible to scratching on the chamfered edges, still turns heads everywhere we go. The Lumia 1020 turns heads also, but for a different reason. The big pure view bulge around back is impossible not to notice, and it definitely makes holding the 1020 a unique experience. We're glad the Lumia's polycarbonate seems able to bear up to some abuse because we can definitely see ourselves dropping it due to the awkward placement of the camera. Finally, both of these phones are weeble wobbles when placed on a table, so don't expect to use either of them no-handed. Down in the engine room, the disparity continues, but there are some commonalities here too. As an Android flagship, the HTC One is the more modern of the two internally, powered by a quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 at 1.7 GHz and backed up by 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of onboard storage. The Lumia 1020 makes do with a dual-core Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 at 1.5 GHz, but it matches the 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. In each case, the onboard memory is non-expandable. Also not expandable on each phone, the battery. For what it's worth, the HTC One's power pack is the larger of the two at 2300 mAh versus the Lumia's 2000 mAh, and we'll have more in-depth thoughts on the Lumia's battery endurance in our full review. Even the window into the heart of each phone is different. The HTC One features a 5-inch SLCD3 display kicking out a resolution of 1080p, while the Lumia makes do with a 4.5-inch WXGA screen that uses AMOLED technology. While that's about as different as you can get on a pair of modern flagships, the saturation and color temperature concerns people often cite about AMOLED can be adjusted with the Lumia's new software customizations. And the grayish blacks and washed out colors people sometimes attribute to LCD screens really aren't in evidence at all on the One. Daylight visibility is just slightly better on the HTC device. As different as these screens are technologically, they're quite comparable in real world use. The rest of the specs between these phones match up quite nicely, with a few exceptions like the Lumia 1020's onboard barometer and the HTC One's IR port and 802.11ac support, features shared by the Galaxy S4 we compared the new Nokia to yesterday. Speaking of the Galaxy S4 comparison, that video gave us a chance to highlight some of the broad differences between the Windows Phone and Android platforms, and much of it holds true with our HTC One here. But the One is running a very different third-party UI atop Android, and it's called Sense 5. This is a much flatter, more minimalistic, and frankly more responsive skin than Samsung's TouchWiz, 
So it's actually a much closer analog to Windows Phone 8 running on the Lumia 1020. That's especially true if you agree with those who feel that HTC's Blink Feed social app is derivative of the Windows Phone design aesthetic. But similar is not identical. And the bottom line here is that the software on these phones is still fundamentally and hugely different. See our full reviews of both Windows Phone 8 and the HTC One for our in-depth thoughts on these two platforms. Also fundamentally different, the camera experience on each device. But there are still some surprises here. While the Nokia's absurdly huge 41 megapixel camera is over 10 times the resolution of HTC's 4 megapixel shooter, the contest isn't the slam dunk you might expect. Remember, the One's camera packs optical image stabilization alongside a sensor with very large pixels, meaning it can capture pretty excellent low light photos. Now, the 1020 certainly can as well, thanks to its manually customizable shutter speed, exposure, and almost every other setting you can think of, as well as its own optical image stabilization, but the added light that the One automatically imparts to a scene is sometimes quite helpful. Other times, though, it can be a hindrance, and that's where the 1020 shines. Many photos taken with the Lumia show richer, more natural color saturation than the One's washed out results. And the Lumia, with its 34 megapixel raw and 5 megapixel oversampled shooting modes, also excels at picking out fine detail. That's especially true with text photographed from a distance, with the 1020 providing much sharper results even in low light, results which can be seen right on the phone before snapping the photo, or later on through simple cropping. In terms of 1080p video, the 1020 is the clear winner. While the One might deliver louder audio and a slightly more stable picture, it also has a tough time keeping focus, and it exhibits much wilder swings in exposure when shifting between light and dark zones. By contrast, the 1020 delivers a sharp, saturated, and much crisper image most of the time. Here's a few seconds of sample footage from each with audio. The front-facing cameras deserve one sentence, and here it is. They're both wide-angle, which is great, and they offer you a choice of a horrible purple tint or a sickly green one, which isn't great. They're front-facing cameras, folks. Let's move on. Time to touch on the viewfinders. Where the One uses a fairly typical smartphone interface for snapping photos with filters and shooting modes and such, the Lumia pulls out all the stops, with available adjustments for almost every setting you can imagine, including manual focus. The Nokia Pro Camera app takes significantly longer to launch as a result of all that added power, but it is worth it. The Lumia also packs the Nokia Smart Camera app for some fun editing options like erasing unwanted objects, instilling motion blur, and so on. But remember, these options are matched, and even exceeded in some respects, by HTC Zoe on the One. And the One also sports one of the most enjoyable gallery experiences we've ever come across. So while the 1020 may enjoy the upper hand in terms of raw photographic performance, the One is no slouch when it comes to a solid camera experience overall. We're using the Lumia and the One on separate networks, so you'll have to take some of our test notes with a grain of salt. That aside, we found the One to be a bit better at suppressing background noise and voice calls, which shouldn't be a surprise considering its excellent record in the phone call arena. That holds true for speakerphone performance as well. Those boom sound forward firing speakers aren't necessarily louder than the Lumia 1020's bottom mounted port, but they're definitely clearer and more dynamic. The Lumia brings a little bit more heat in the earbud department, its Dolby headphone support a bit more customizable than HTC's Beats Audio, but overall, the One is in no danger of losing its audio quality crown to the Lumia. Buying either one of these devices will mean that you're getting some of the very best of what a platform has to offer. While there are major differences in aesthetics and internals, the biggest gulf here is obviously in the camera. Now the One excels at delivering an excellent casual shooting experience with bright low light shots and lots of fun touches like the Zoe Suite many of which are so much fun that they might actually change the way you share pictures from your smartphone. 
but its resolution is pretty low, and it doesn't always produce the sharpest results. The Lumia 1020 packs in a lot of its own fun in the form of the Nokia Smart Cam, but its primary camera lends itself more to the aspiring professional photographer, or at least a person willing to fiddle a little with settings. If you're one of those people, the Lumia 1020 can produce the best photos you'll ever see from a smartphone. And even if you're not one of those people, the 1020 will probably still outclass the One's pictures. The only question is whether you're willing to spend the extra Benjamin on the Lumia over the One on an AT&T contract. And of course, whether you're willing to consider a Windows phone as your daily driver. Folks, if you'd like to see the Nokia Lumia 1020 face off against the Galaxy S4, the Lumia 920, or if you just want to see it come out of its box, all those videos are already up and you can find them on our channel page here on YouTube or at pocketnow.com. And pocketnow.com is also where you can find our full review of the Nokia Lumia 1020 coming very shortly. But before you go anywhere, please throw us a like if you did enjoy the video, leave us a comment if you have something to say, and as I say before, follow us on social media so you don't miss future content from Pocket Now. This has been Michael Fisher. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.